Good morning, everyone. We are continuing here in the words of the Orchis Yosher. We're still in the letter Tav for Tefillah. And today he speaks about davening and praying in a beautiful voice. A person needs to daven with a loud voice. V'noim should be pleasant. Like it says in the Midrash, Hashem says, let me hear your voice. When you're davening in front of me, says Hashem, it should be with a loud voice. You should pray loudly. Because your voice is sweet. When I hear your prayers, when I hear the sweetness of your tefillah, when I hear the beauty of the words in which you're saying, and you say it with that loud and confident voice, it doesn't mean screaming, it doesn't mean yelling necessarily over here, it just means that you raise your voice. When we are confident and we are sure and we are proud of the things that we are saying, they mean something to us, we tend to talk loudly, we raise our voice. You see people walking in the street, they're having an animated, uh, animated conversation, whether there's another person next to them or they're on their, on their phone, and they're talking loudly. You look in the car that's next to you on the road, and you see a person, their hands are moving, their head is bobbling up and down, their mouth is open, and they're having a, a very intense, animated conversation. Those things, when you, you go to, you go and you learn, and you sit down and you study, and you learn with somebody who gets excited about his learning, so he raises his voice. The things that when you go to La Havdil, you go to the sports game and you go to somebody's house and the ball game is on and they're screaming and they're cheering and they're yelling, they raise their voice. Nobody sits there quietly. When it comes to our tefillah, when it comes to our prayer, there is nothing greater than a, a way for a person to connect themselves to Hashem than to be able to talk to the master of the universe. So when we, when we go through the actions and the motions of tefillah, of prayer, so what should we be doing? We should be is so proud and we should be so confident and so sure of the words that we are saying. These are the words, remember, they're written by the Ansheik Nes HaGadoyla. These are the men of the Great Assembly. Amongst them were prophets. And those that weren't prophets, they had Ruach HaKadosh, they had divine inspiration. And besides that, they had all of the Torah behind them because they were all masters of the wisdom and the knowledge of the Torah. And therefore, when you're saying those words, you're saying words that have been set in stone from 20, 200 years ago. Words that are filled with the, the most mystical ideas and concepts, even if you don't understand what they are. Words that will allow your neshama to be able to connect to HaKadosh Baruch Hu in the prayers that we are saying. And therefore, when a person comes and they sit in shul, how should they daven? So again, if, you're, if you are confident and comfortable with the words, you know to an extent, or you're able, at least able to read what you're saying, a person should lift up his call, lift up his voice, he should say out loud with pride and with joy and with confidence the prayers that he's saying to HaKadosh Baruch And ki koylech arev, your voice is sweet. Your voice is sweet in prayer. It shouldn't be, it shouldn't be a machine gun da -da 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 -da, rattling off that we're doing. Rather pleasant. There's nothing like a pleasant baltfila when you have somebody who comes to the shul and they daven. You can hear the sweetness dripping out of their voice. The way that they daven, it's completely connected to the heart, and the heart pushes its way out of their lips. And then you hear those words of prayer that are coming from the person. It's pleasant. It's beautiful. It's wonderful to be in such a base midrash, such a shul, and such a yeshiva that has that has such davening like that. So we have to try. It's hard for some of us because we're not so good with Hebrew. And then we don't want to start saying things out loud in English. But whatever you could say out loud, whatever Hebrew word you do know over there. Maybe you know Shema Yisrael Hashem Malkeinu Hashem Echad. Maybe you know the word Baruch in Hebrew. Maybe you know the word Haida. Uh, whatever, whatever word it is that you might know. If you know that word in Hebrew and you're, you feel good about that word that you say, say it out loud and say it in a sweet voice because that's the, that's the pleasure that HaKadosh Baruch has in our prayers. The Halachic authorities write this as well. And they speak about the tremendous reward that a person will gain for raising his voice in sweet melodies in Shul. But I and Saif Shir Hashir and Rambam if you look at the end of the Midrash in Shir Hashirim, you'll find that. But I and Shulchan Aruch, and the Shulchan Aruch speaks about it as well. The Ramban himself actually writes at the end of Parshas Bai that the Tachlis, the purpose of the Jewish people, is to gather together in the Bati Knesset, in the shuls, 
and we should raise our voices out loud in tefillah and we should proclaim to Hashem we are your creations we are your children we want to do your will and that's tefillah tefillah is such a way for us to recognize that we are Hashem's creatures we are his handiwork we are his children and we are here to do his will because prayer itself acknowledges that HaKadosh Baruch Hu runs the world. Tefillah acknowledges that Hashem is in control of everything. It acknowledges that I can't do anything on my own. I need HaKadosh Baruch Hu's loving embrace and His kindness and His compassion and His intervention in all that is going on in my life. Once that I recognize that, so then I raise up my voice and I do it in a sweet and a pleasant way. And that says, say Chazal, our sages, and this is what Ruchayim Kanievsky is coming to teach us today, that is a nachas, that is such a pleasure in the eyes of Hashem, and it will increase and elevate the power of our prayers as well. And now that we come to Shabbos, the day with less distractions, not the phone, not the radios, not the videos, nothing, we can just come to shul, we can focus in on that which we are saying, that which we are doing, and we can even become more powerful and more confident, more upbeat in our prayers, raise our voice even more, and have that sweet, pleasant voice, which will be a nachas, a pleasure in the eyes of Hashem. Have a wonderful day and a wonderful Shabbos.